What's up and welcome back to another video. Today we will be talking about the assault rifles inside of Borderlands 2 and ranking them from worst to best. Now before I hop into today's video, I just want to go ahead and say that I am not using the assault rifles in the best manner inside of Borderlands 2. I'm actually using them on the Gunzerker aka Salvador in case you guys didn't know, which is not the best characters for assault rifles. If you guys are unaware, it is Axton. I just want to clear that up really quickly that I do know that these weapons can be used more efficiently on another character because you guys will see me using Salvador in today's gameplay. Now that I've explained myself, I want to go ahead and hop in to today's list so let's go ahead and get on to number seven coming in at our number seven spot we have none other than the assault rifle manufactured by bandit yes everyone's favorite the madhouse now where to begin with one of the coolest looking weapons inside of borderlands 2 well that's really about the only good thing about it because if i'm being completely honest this gun is an absolute buttload of shit talking about the upsides of the madhouse really ends very quickly i mean it has a large magazine it can come in all elements you guys can acquire the madhouse inside of lynchwood from a boss named mad dog now to get mad dog to spawn you will need to start a mission called breaking the bank which you will kill him very early on inside of that mission but i'm sure most of you guys know that by now but for you guys that don't know wanted to go ahead and explain but in my personal opinion if you ever get this gun to drop in borderlands 2 you might be better off just leaving it on the damn ground coming in at our number six spot we have an assault rifle that is just a little bit better and in my opinion actually can be used in the first two playthroughs and that is the hammer buster the hammer buster is an assault rifle man manufactured by Jacobs in case you guys did not know you can get it from McNally located inside the dust you will need to complete the Bane side quest to actually farm this one so where do I even begin with this assault rifle well what the hell people you have to do the Bane to get this guy to spawn which is already an, an annoying side quest as it is all for you to get the garbage weapon that is the Bane for completing that side quest and then after the fact you get this nice legendary to farm which is decent in the first two playthroughs which is why I put it above the madhouse but let's not hype this weapon up too much because it is honestly kind of crap inside of ultimate vault hunter mode the damage outputs of this weapon is was actually so bad that it was kind of hard to even get gameplay of me using this weapon and i'm being completely honest here i understand that on axton it may be a bit better because he does increase assault rifle damage very dramatically and it, it's just much more efficient when you use him but that doesn't give the weapon an excuse to be so garbage inside ultimate vault hunter mode and plus there's a way better legendary jacobs that we will talk about later on in this video coming in at our number five spot we have assault rifles that from here on up in the video in my personal opinion they're at least fun to use in some capacity so i mean they've got that going for them but this gun is still in my opinion not the best in the game and it is the shred of fire now to acquire this one it's not going to be no no easy damn p let me tell you ladies and gentlemen it will be hyperius the invincible so for a long time inside of borderlands 2 there actually was no way to actually get the shred of fire which automatically docks at points on the list but let's pause because then they released the captain scarlet's dlc and if you guys do not know once you complete this dlc you may fight hyperius the invincible which you will have a small percentage of a chance to get the shred of fire from this raid boss but if you're farming hyperius i don't know why you'd be looking for a shred of fire when he can drop much better weapons such as the hornet and also the norfleet so why would you farm the shred of fire when the guy you're farming the shred of fire for drops better legendaries than the shred of fire yeah this spin gun manufactured by vladov is honestly pretty decent but it is not better than the next four assault rifles and for that it sits right here in the middle of the list coming in at our number four spot we have none other than the assault rifle manufactured by doll and that is the Varuk. now this gun i'm sure a lot of you guys expected me to put it even lower on the list but i'm gonna go ahead and defend it right here right now and say that this is the best assault rifle for normal and true vault hunter mode other than the first two on the list the Varuk's damage in the first two playthroughs is absolutely incredible and it is a little bit unfortunate that in ultimate vault hunter mode it just does not hold up all that well now if you guys want to get your own Varuk, you guys are going to want to head to the dust and complete the good the bad and the mordecai but you guys will want to head up to the church and take on mobley and gettle it'll be mobley who actually does drop you the Varuk assault rifle now this weapon all around is a decent assault rifle and in my opinion is super underlooked in the community this weapon can also come in any element when you aim down sights it'll be a burst fire weapon 
and when you are not aiming down sights, and when you are just firing at the hip, it will just be a single shot assault rifle. Pattern of the bullets was also always super unique, at least in my opinion, I really did enjoy, I believe it's three or maybe even four bullets that shoot out. But yeah, the Varuk is a pretty decent assault rifle, and I really don't know what else to say about it. Coming in at our number three spot, we have none other than the assault rifle manufactured by Torg that you can get from Midgemong, the Kerblaster. So for an assault rifle that you can get super early on in Borderlands 2, I honestly think it is super underrated. And a lot of people would have probably actually put this towards the bottom of the list. And I don't understand that because in the first two playthroughs, it is amazing. And even in Ultimate Vault Hunter mode, it can hold up in certain situations depending on what character you're using. On Axton, the Kerblaster is an absolute machine of a weapon. I was even able to get some pretty decent gameplay here with it on Salvador. Now the gimmick with this weapon is when you fire your explosive shot from the Torg assault rifle that is the Kerblaster. It'll actually set down another grenade and it'll blow up just a couple seconds after dealing even more damage. Now in Ultimate Vault Hunter mode this little gimmick for the Kerblaster honestly isn't that important and is a little bit irrelevant which honestly is unfortunate because in the first two playthroughs this effect of the weapon honestly helps you out a shit ton and has honestly saved me a couple times getting second wins. If you guys haven't used the Kerblaster yet or maybe you thought it was a piece of shit weapon maybe now that you've heard my opinion maybe go ahead and try it out one more time coming in at our number two spot we honestly have an assault rifle that had no right being as good as it really is and that weapon is the m2828 thompson now if you guys do not know this is the assault rifle manufactured by jacobs which you can get in the fight for sanctuary dlc located in the little spot which i will show you on screen now which you guys will need to run here and this is actually the brothers of arms easter egg you guys will need to shoot that little pile on the ground that you see on screen and it will actually spawn in this little pile you can also see the little helmet with the shovel there in the back i mean i honestly think this is a super sick easter egg props to gearbox for putting this one in because i honestly loved this game back on the xbox 360 i don't know how many of you guys have played it but i was honestly a big fan back in the day i honestly love how unique this farm is just going and be able to shoot just a little dirt pile and get a legendary have you ever been able to do that that's just half of it because the gun is bad the hell ass basically take the hammer buster and put it on steroids maybe even pin it up against brock lesnar beat brock lesnar come out of that match as the world champion and then you have the M2828 Thompson. And if you don't get what that means, well, I'm sorry because I really don't have much more to say about the M2828 Thompson. Go get one yourself and find out why this weapon is in our number two spot. Coming in at our number one spot, we have another assault rifle manufactured by Torg, and I'm sure it is no surprise to any of you, it is the Ogre. Now, I honestly did want to put the M2828 Thompson in the number one spot, but I could not make myself do it because the Ogre ogre is so damn good now there are some downsides of this weapon which i will get to shortly it doesn't come in any form of the fire rate or the damage or even the accuracy but we will talk about that in a second like i just mentioned but i want to go ahead and just mention the fact that we got a legendary inside of the tiny tina's dlc now i know we did get some other legendary grenade mods inside of this dlc this is the only real weapon that we got inside of Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep, and I honestly took it for granted back in the day, because this weapon is honestly a beast. The big magazine honestly helps this weapon, unlike that piece of shit that we talked about at the start of this video, the Madhouse. If you guys haven't seen any footage of Axton using it, or used it on Axton yourself, maybe you should try that out. Go ahead and talk about the downfall of it, and that is the farm. No, I'm not going to explain how to farm that gun. I'm sorry. I love the ogre, but in all seriousness, if I'm going to sit there and spend 13 hours farming for the ogre, I will lose my mind. So if you guys want to do that, go ahead and look it up how to do it yourself because I'm not explaining it. All right, all right. I hope you guys did enjoy today's video. If you did, make sure to smash a like on it and tell me what you guys want to see ranked from worst to best next down below in the comments. And if you guys do want to go get your own ogre, seriously, just go Google it. It's not hard to figure out. I was being a little bit ridiculous there, but in all seriousness, though, it is kind of hard to farm. And with that, I will see you guys next time.